Praise the Lord. Make sure this is on. Okay, good. Lord bless you all. God is good. Amen. 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 We have a small video to watch. Um, it's not that long, but I want to share it with you this morning before we announce uh, what it's about. Okay? So I'm going to turn off the lights here, and we'll get you to be able to see that video. Amen? Hey, God bless you. Hey, God bless you. This is Pastor Choco. What a joy it is to come to you all today. Thank you for joining us in the campaign, Let's Pray. Did you know that in the Bible, every time there is a crisis, God would put in the hearts of individuals to pray? Esther, she gathered the people and said, hey, we need to pray for this. Nehemiah, the Bible teaches us that before he went to Jerusalem to address the issue, he went to three months of prayer. All I'm trying to tell you is that prayer works. Prayer is powerful when God's people come together. The Bible says, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Prayer matters. I'm pleased to send you and your congregation a special gift. A prayer guide designed to unite us. 30 days of prayer for America from August 1st through the 30th. This guide contains daily prayers, each focusing on a different need within our nation. Inspire the promise by the promise of 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, watch this, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So I want to thank you personally for joining us as churches, as individuals, as life groups across this nation, praying for America. May the gospel be displayed in prayer and in action as we continue to seek and save and send the lost in our country. Join in with me. Let us pray. That's a beautiful thing. So they have provided for us a guide. And a, a guide, a beautiful guide. It's going to be not only in English, but we've also ordered Spanish that we could provide. Um, but it's 30 days for the month of August that we will be praying. Hay, hay 30 días en agosto que vamos a orar. Ya van a tener estos, uh, uh, no, no sé si pa papeles, nada más eso. Um, but ya van a tener la información para, para, uh, para orar cada día. Cada día ya tenemos una eh, escritura también con un, una cosa para orar durante ese tiempo. And, and there's going to be a day that it's going to give you a scripture. It's going to give you a way that you can pray specifically for our country. And it divides it up, whether it's through unity, healing, deliverance, freedom, revival, or for our country in general. So I encourage you, um, we have ordered uh, these uh, for both Spanish and English. And please grab one. Uh, I don't know how many we have right now, but we will be having, I believe, uh, about 25 to 30. They're right there right now, but they're in English only, right? English only, if I'm correct in saying that? Yes. yes. Okay. So English only right now. Spanish is coming. All right? All right. So let's pray. Amen. Let's get ourselves to prayer. Amen. Seek the Lord. If you said, Pastor, I don't know what to pray about. Well, I'll give you 30 reasons to pray this month. Amen. I'll give you 30 reasons to pray. You don't have to worry about it. I'll provide the reasons for you today. Amen. Let's, let's bow our heads as we get ready. And let's pray over the Word of God this morning. Amen. Oh, Lord, we, we, are, we are thankful. Uh, we are blessed. And God, we are seeking your face, asking you for direction uh, within our lives. And so this morning, Lord, we ask you that you would help us that God, that you would allow your word to speak to our hearts, that we would become very focused 
on what it is that you want to say to us this morning. I thank you, God. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your patience. I, I thank you for your love. And I'm asking, Lord, this morning that you would allow your word to speak to our lives as we as your people want to listen and hear from you. We want to hear from heaven. Uh, we pray blessing over this word and we pray over it. Your word is written in my mind and your word is hidden in my heart. Your word, it is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I will seek you with all my strength because I choose to live my life according to your word. Your word, O oh Lord, it is eternal. Amen. I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter 2. Vamos a abrir nuestra, uh, en Marcos, uh, dos. And we're going to be looking at verses 23 through 28. Now, we're going to be talking about something that I think we're all familiar with. Vamos a hablar, um, de algo que todos, um, ya it's the Sabbath. Es el descanso. And it's an important part of what we are as the people of God. Some have said it is a gift of God. It's a, it's a wonderful gift that comes from Him. If we want to pattern our lives, um, queremos, um, uh, seguir, uh, vidas, uh, after Jesus, uh, con Jesús, we need to know and to embrace the, the idea of rest that comes from the Sabbath. Now, most of the world's religions, uh, de las, uh, del mundo, they, they hold a high regard for sacred places. And Islam honors Mecca. Como Islam honra a Mecca. Hindu, Hinduism honors the Ganges River. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, and then Shintoism, the island of Japan. But Judaism, it's it's Jerusalem, and especially the temple. It's a sacred place. But I believe even beyond the temple, Pero más de, del templo, beyond it, they, they hold sacred um, ellos tienen, uh, of the Sabbath. El día de it's an important part of, of their, their religion. Several times in the scripture that we are going to read today, um, Jesus has offended religious leaders. Now he hasn't broken the law, but he has violated the traditions of men. They are upset with Jesus, folks, because he refuses to do the things that, that you should do. And because of it, esto, they confront the behavior of Christ. Um, conf a and they have a hatred towards him for it. Y lo odian por eso. Mark chapter 3, verse number 6 says this. En Marcos, uh, capítulo 3, verso 6, dice esto. At once the Pharisees went away and met with the supporters of Herod to plot how to kill Jesus. Los fariseos salieron eh, enseguida y se reunieron con los partidarios de Herodes para tramar cómo matar a Jesús. This shows how much that God, Jesus actually irritated them. <laughs> Esto enseña mucho cómo Jesús uh, los uh, irritó. Now the Pharisees, they're, they're always criticizing something. Los fariseos siempre andan criticando algo. 
You know what? There's a saying that I found while I was studying this. Cuando estaba estudiando esto, hay un dicho. The meanest people in the world can be people with religion. Uh, las personas que están uh, más um, enojados tienen religión en ellos. A person who has the rules Una persona que tiene, um, reglas, and no relationship with Jesus y no tener relación con Jesús. is a very hard person to deal with. And that's what's happening right here. Y es lo que está aquí. No relationship. No hay but a lot of rules. Pero and because of those rules, y por esas reglas, there's irritation because Jesus is not following them. They cannot believe that the disciples are doing what they're doing. I want you to read with me in Mark chapter 2, verse number 23 to start. Ahora vamos a leer en Marcos 2, uh, verso 23. On the Sabbath days, Jesus was walking through some grain fields. His disciples began breaking off heads of grain to eat. Cierto día de descanso, mientras Jesús uh, caminaba por un, unos terrenos sembrados, Sus discípulos comenzaron a arrancar espigas de grano para comer. The Pharisees are upset because the disciples are eating grain. Los fariseos están enojados porque están comiendo grano. And they're doing it on the Sabbath day. Y lo están haciendo en el día de descanso. Now, I don't know about you. No sé uh, si ustedes. But if somebody's walking on your property. Pero si alguien está caminando en su yarda, and grabbing fruit from it. Y fruta, how many of you would be happy about that? ¿quién estaría feliz de eso? You're in your backyard. Están atrás en su yarda. You're, in your, you're inside of your kitchen. Están <laughs> de su you're looking out the back into the backyard. Y ven para afuera, and you see people just grabbing fruit. Y gente está agarrando fruta. What would you say? ¿Qué dirían? Would you open the door? Take all that you want. <laughs> Or would some of you go, um, excuse me, what are you doing in my house? Get out! See, this is kind of what the attitude, there were two things that were happening here. But in reality, it's this. It was a common practice within these days. The law of Moses gave instructions. Las leyes de Moisés daban instrucciones. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 24 and 25. And Deuteronomy 23, When you enter your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat your fill of grapes, but you must not carry any away in a basket. And when you enter your neighbor's field of grain, you may pluck the heads of grain with your hand, but you must not harvest it with a sickle. También cuando entres en el campo de un vecino, podrás arrancar los granos de trigo con la mano, pero no cortarás las espigas con lo, oh, los the disciples were not breaking any laws. Los discípulos no estaban quebrando ninguna de las leyes. But they were, in the Pharisees' opinion, breaking the Sabbath. Pero los fariseos, es, uh, fariseos estaban uh, diciendo que estaban quebrando las leyes del, del descanso. Let's read on in Mark 2.24. Hay que seguir en Marcos uh, capítulo 2 al 20, el 24. But the Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, why are they breaking the law? by harvesting grain on the Sabbath. Entonces, los fariseos le dijeron a Jesús, Mira, ¿por qué tus discípulos violan la ley al cosechar granos en el día de descanso? The Pharisees came to Jesus to attack him. Los fariseos vinieron a Jesús uh, para atacarlo. 
And they attacked him because the disciples were picking grain and eating it on the Sabbath. They accused the disciples of something unlawful. Look what the law says in Leviticus 23.3. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of complete rest, an official day for holy assembly. It is the Lord's Sabbath, and it must be observed wherever you live. Now they just weren't allowed to work. But work refers to their business. They weren't able to work for a living. So God was very serious about this, folks. There was to be no work to earn money during this day. It's found in Exodus 31, verses 13 and 14. Tell the people of Israel, be careful to keep my Sabbath day. For the Sabbath is a sign of the covenant between me and you from generation to generation. It is given so you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. Diles a los israelitas, asegúrense de guardar mi día de descanso, porque el día de descanso es una señal del pacto entre ustedes y yo de generación en generación. Se ha establecido con para que sepan que yo soy el Señor quien los hace santos. You must keep the Sabbath day, for it is a holy day for you. Anyone who desecrates it must be put to death. Anyone who works on that day will be cut off from the community. Deberán guardar el día de descanso, porque es un día santo para ustedes. Cualquiera que los pro the disciples actually were just eating, folks. Um, <laughs> los, uh, no más they, were, they were hungry. Here's the problem. Aquí es el they didn't break the law. No but they violated a tradition during that time. Pero una en ese a tradition that was established by the Pharisees. They were the laws that they created. Eran las leyes que ellos they were far beyond the original meaning of what it meant. Ya I found a few just to share with you. Unos para, para One could eat nothing larger than an olive. Uno no, no podía comer nada más que un olivo. That's a lot of little pieces, right? <laughs> That's a lot of little eating all day long. Poquito, <laughs> nothing could be bought or sold. Nada se podía o Clothing could not be washed or dyed. A fire could not be lit or extinguished. Un fuego, uh, no se podía o if you fail to light your lamp before the Sabbath, si no, um, uh, tu antes del día de descanso, you had to sit in the dark until the next evening. <laughs> It was unlawful. 
contra la ley. To tie or untie a knot. De hacer un nudo o deshacer un nudo. No rangers on the Sabbath. No, habían, yeah. no knot tying, sorry. <laughs> no podían los rangers hacer eso. You couldn't sew two stitches. Uh, no podían coser dos puntos or, de sutura. Or prepare food. O preparar comida. Now, this is a few of thousands of them. Esos son nomás uh, poquitos um, ejemplos. There were senseless rules. Habían muchas reglas uh, sin sentido. People were forced to live by them. Y la, las personas estaban forzadas a vivir así. And when the Pharisees saw them picking this grain. Y cuando los fariseos uh, vieron que estaban uh, agarrando el grano. They wanted to judge them. Los querían juzgar. You say, well, pastor, what does that have to do with me? Y uh, dices, pastor, ¿qué tiene que ver eso conmigo? Sometimes we get so focused on rules and regulations. A veces nos enfocamos mucho en las reglas um, y las leyes. Traditions that we have within our life. Las tradiciones que tenemos en nuestra vida. Even our own thoughts. También nuestros um, pensamientos. Or ideas. O ideas. This is how the church should be run. Así debe de, de estar la iglesia. This is how they should be doing this. Tienen que hacerlo así. The problem with that, all that is this. El problema con todo eso es esto. That eventually we give them greater authority than the word of God. But God's word is the final authority. Amen. Pero la palabra de Dios es, es la, la autoridad final. It's our only standard of faith and practice that we follow. Es, um, nuestra práctica y fe que tenemos que seguir. Listen, when we stand before the Lord, <laughs> uh, cuando se paran en frente de Dios, we're not going to be judged by the words of my preaching. No vamos a estar juzgados por las palabras de lo que digo. But the traditions of men. O las tradiciones del, del hombre. Not even your thoughts or ideas. Ni tus ideas ni tus pensamientos tampoco. We will be judged by the word of God. Vamos a estar juzgados por la palabra de Dios. And how we followed it. Y cómo la seguimos. How we allowed it to impact our life. Cómo la dejamos que impacta en nuestra vida. John 12, 48 says this. En Juan uh, capítulo 12, 48. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. Pero todos los que me rechazan a mí y rechazan mis mensajes serán juzgados el día del juicio por la verdad que yo ha hablado, he hablado. Now, how many know that Jesus is like the master of confrontation? Amen. ¿A quién sabe que Jesús um, uh, es el master de confrontación? He knows how to deal with problems. Amen. ¿Quién sabe cómo um, uh, uh, resolver las, los problemas? So the men are attacked. Los hombres están atacados. Jesus doesn't condemn disciples. Um, el, uh, Jesús no condena a los discípulos. Nor does he condone their actions. Ni tampoco sus acciones. He doesn't argue with the Pharisees. No uh, discute con los fariseos. He does what we should do. Hace lo que nosotros deberemos when hacer. When people want to argue with you. Cuando alguien quiere discutir contigo. Point them to the Word of God. Um, enseñales la palabra de Dios. I'm not saying it. Yo no lo estoy diciendo. The Word of God is saying it. La palabra de Dios you got a problem with it. Si tienes un problema con eso, go to God. Ve con Dios. I'm just following His Word. Nomás estamos siguiendo su palabra. And that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> y es una cosa bien bella. He pointed them to the Word of God. Los Amen. He pointed them to truth. Los punto a la Look what it says. Um, hay que ver lo que dice. Mark 2.25 Jesus said to them, Haven't you ever read in the scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? Jesús les dijo, ¿Acaso no han leído en las escrituras lo que hizo David cuando él y sus compañeros tuvieron hambre? Jesus then pointed them back to the Word of God. Jesús los a la de Dios. He looks at their pride. Um, lo, les ve, um, uh, a su In themselves. En ellos. 
and their knowledge of the word. Y su de la and he asks them, haven't you ever read? Y les pregunta, que it's, no han leído? See, folks, it's easy to stand on beliefs. Um, es fácil en, en and fail to believe what the Bible has to say. Y no ver que lo que dice en la Let's talk about some beliefs that people argue about. Hay que hablar de creencias que <laughs> las, la gente creen. How many have ever heard you can't go swimming after how long after you've eaten? Um, ¿han oído que no ir Anybody a, heard that? Antes de Now, some of you will say, Pastor, that's real. Dicen, Pastor, eso es real. Others will say, eh, I do it all the time, nothing happens. Uh, no, yo lo hago todo el How about the one where if you flip your eyelid upside down and a fly lands on it, it's going to stay that way. <laughs> Remember that one? Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we used to do as kids. My mom would say, when a fly lands on it, that's it. It's going to stay that way. <laughs> I think we all have beliefs that we hold to. But I think we need to hold much closer to God's Word. It's easy to get hung up on how people dress. Or where people eat. Jesus was eating with sinners and he got criticized. Where they shop, where they buy their stuff. Donde sus cosas. Many fail to see the bigger picture of God's word. It is the most important thing. Es lo más Not your ideas. No tus ideas. Not your opinions. No tus It is God's word that we must look to. Es la de Dios que uh, so the Lord explains the question. Uh, Dios, um, explica la pregunta. Mark 2.26 uh, He went into the house of God during the days when Abiathar was high priest and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests are allowed to eat. He also gave some to his companions. Entró en la casa de Dios en el tiempo que Abiatar era sumo sacerdote y violó la ley al comer los panes sagrados que solo a los sacerdotes se le permite comer y también les dio una porción a sus compañeros. When he, Saul was, uh, when David was fleeing from Saul, folks, David yendo de Saul, he and his men were hungry for food. Um, uh, los hombres tenían hambre. And Jesus reminds them Jesús, of that incident. Y Jesús los acuerda de ese incidente. He tells them, don't you remember this happened to David? Um, no se acuerdan que esto le pasó a David? That David and his men would come to the priest. Que, um, David y sus hombres venían al, al, al cura. And he would ask for food. Y preguntaban por uh, comida. The priest tells him that there's no bread. Um, el, el cura les dice que no hay pan. But there is shoe bread. Pero hay pan de share. Yeah, it's a different type of bread. Un, un diferente tipo de, de pan. Twelve loaves represent the twelve tribes of Israel. Uh, las, las, los doce... Pan, um, representaban a uh, los um, tribes. I don't know tribes in Spanish. Tribas? Okay. Escribas? Escribas. Escribos. It's a Escribos. new word I learned too. Okay. I didn't know tribes. Okay. Escribos. Escribos. I thought that would be writings, right? But I guess yeah, that's it. That's, yeah. Escribos, okay. Yeah. There were 12 of them. Um, habían 12. And they represented these tribes, these, these escribos. Amen? Um, actually, it's tribus. Tribus. It's tribus, yeah. It's tribus. <laughs> oh. It's tribus, okay. It's that makes more sense. Representaban los tribus de Israel. They reminded Israel of the Lord's presence among his people. Acordaban a Israel de la presencia de Dios. His people for their dependence upon him. De depender en él. For their physical needs in their life. Para sus necesidades. 
necesidades físicas. The clear teachings here is that are times when human needs are more important than that legalistic law. Las enseñanzas aquí es um, cuando um, It's more important es, es más than the law, keeping the law. Que, um, de tener la, la ley. Jesus made this point in other places as well. Jesus hizo esto en, en otros lados I want you to look at Luke chapter 14. We're going to skip one verse there. Luke chapter 14, verses 3 through 5. Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in religious law, is it permitted in the law to heal people on the Sabbath day or not? When they refused to answer, Jesus touched the sick man and healed him and sent him away. Then he turned to them and said, Which of you doesn't work on the Sabbath? If your son or cow falls into a pit, don't you rush to get him out? I think the, the way that I want you to walk away with this thought on this is this. Which is easier to do? To judge somebody? Or help somebody? Nobody's perfect. Nobody here has the best practice of following Jesus. But we all can learn from God's word. And I think that's what the Lord is trying to show the Pharisees. That the actions that we do, are they lawful? Or biblical? Do they follow God's word um, siguen a la, um, palabra de Dios and a Christian practice? En, en, en un Sometimes people can't come inside the church a veces la gente ni a la because of the way that they are dressed. Por como están How many know that's wrong? Pero como saben que eso no es that all should be welcome in the house of God. We should never turn anybody away. Come in. Sit down. Receive the word of God. Let it change your life. There should be a message of hope. Not a message of regulation. This is not a club, folks. This is a church este es una iglesia. for anybody who is looking for answers within their life. Por que está buscando, um, las en su vida. And that includes you and me. Y eso a ti y a mí. Each of us Cada uno are facing something different está, within our life. Por cosas en vidas. We come here y aquí to not only worship the Lord, no nomás para al Señor, but to receive from Him. Pero Sometimes it's direction. A veces es Sometimes it's encouragement. Amen. A veces es, uh, ánimo. Sometimes it's discipline. A ve a veces es discipline. Sometimes it comes and says, you have to do this. A veces dice, Tienes que hacer esto. The question that I have for you with this. La pregunta que les tengo a ustedes es esto. Do you come to question? Vienen a preguntar. Or do you come to receive? O vienen a recibir. God is looking at providing for you. We move on to the final and closing point. Ahora seguimos al último punto. Jesus gives us the reason for the Sabbath. Jesus nos da la razón por el día de descanso. Mark chapter 2 verse 27. En Marcos 2, 27. Gives us a lot of insight. Nos da mucho, 
It reads, Then Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people, and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. Después Jesús les dijo, El día de descanso se hizo para satisfacer las necesidades de la gente, y no para que la gente satisfaga los requisitos del día de descanso. Jesus tells them Jesus les dice, that the Sabbath was given for us. El día de descanso se dio para nosotros. It does not exist to be served. No existe para, uh, servir. It exists to serve. Existe para servir. The Sabbath means to rest. El, um, el día, el día de descanso es para descansar. It's to cease to work. Es para no trabajar. It's inactivity. It was first observed by God Himself. Genesis 2, 1 through 3. So the creation of the heavens and earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all of his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. The Sabbath was given to us out of the grace of God. God gave one day out of seven in which we had do, to do nothing to work for purposes of living. We were, to, we were to take this one day and rest in it. We're to use this day as a reflection of what God has done for us the last six. To worship Him for the last six days. How many of us have something to thank God for the last six days? Amen. We have something to be grateful for. You've made it this far. Amen. You're alive. God has given you breath and life. It's so important for us to worship Him for it. We rest our bodies. And we reflect on the blessings of the Lord. That was the intent of the Sabbath. Now, the Sabbath technically is Saturday according to Jewish law. Yeah, but it's Sunday for us. Now, how many know we do a lot of things on Sunday? Football season comes around and I may not see you that much. Sometimes we have concerts we go to. And sometimes we have dinner plans with friends and family. And don't get me wrong. That's good. Es, es bueno. But it should never substitute our gathering together as one for the God that we serve. But truly, Christ is the most important thing in our life, though. Cristo es lo más en vida. Colossians 2, 16 and 17 says this. So don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink 
or for celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. Por lo tanto, no permitan que nadie los condene por lo que com coman o beben o porque no celebran ciertos días santos ni ceremonias por luna nueva ni los días de descanso. For these rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come, and Christ himself is that reality. Pues esas reglas son solo sombras de la realidad que vendrá, y Cristo mismo es esa realidad. The truth is this. La verdad es esto. You shouldn't come to church because that's what you're supposed to do. No deberían de venir a la iglesia porque tienen que venir. You should come to church because of what Christ has done for you. Because of what he has helped you with in your life. He is the reality. He is the truth. He is the way. Camino. Yeah. He is the way. And we have to remember that the only reason why you should come it shouldn't be to look at your watch is he almost done I want to go eat I have plans in the afternoon hurry up pastor it's not to come to listen to me it's to come and listen to what God has to say to you Because there's something for all of us always in a message. Hay algo para todos. We all say, oh, I already know that. Um, a veces decimos, oh, yo ya sé eso. Just like I know you're not supposed to drive over 65. But I know you do. Pero sabemos que sí. It's not knowing. No es el saber. It's doing. When I tell you to love your enemies, digo que amen a sus do you leave church and go seek them out and say, Man, I love you, brother? Van y los y les dicen, Te amo. Or do you do this? O hacen esto. Well, I'll just avoid them so I don't have to do anything. That's not love. Eso no es el amor. See, it's one thing to say I know it, es una cosa decir que lo sé. it's another thing to do it. Y es otra cosa de hacerlo. And the same principle applies here. El mismo principe, um, aplica aquí. It's another thing knowing you have to give God thanks. Es una cosa saber que le que dar a Dios. It's another thing coming and doing it. Es otra cosa venir aquí y the Bible tells us in Acts 27. And la nos dice en 27. On the first day of the week, we gathered with local believers to share in the Lord's Supper. Paul was preaching to them, and since then, and since he was leaving the next day, he kept talking until midnight. El primer día de la semana, nos reunimos con los creyentes locales para practicar de la cena del Señor. Pablo les estaba predicando, y como iba a viajar el día siguiente, siguió hablando hasta la medianoche. 1 Corinthians 16.2 says this. El primero de Corintios 16, 12. On the first day of each week, you should each put aside a portion of the money you have earned. Don't wait until I get there and then try to collect it all at once. Um, el primer día de, de cada semana, cada uno debería separar una parte del dinero que ha ganado. No esperen hasta que yo llegue para luego tratar de reunirlo todo de golpe. The church was formed for this purpose. La iglesia estaba formada para este propósito. To meet together. Para estar aquí juntos. To do the Lord's Supper. Para hacer el, um, la Santa Cena. And to worship the Lord. Y para... Um, para alabar. Para alabar. Yeah. And... It is here to come and give what we've been blessed with. The Bible tells us in Mark 2.28. So 
so the Son of Man is Lord, even over the Sabbath. Jesus sums up everything to the Pharisees and says them to this. That he is the Lord of everything in life. It's far more important, folks, es mucho más to know him through a personal relationship with him. than to keep any kind of rules or regulations. De que tener reglas o, um, leyes. Rituals and rules cannot save your soul. Las reglas y las leyes no pueden But Jesus can. Pero Jesús puede. Acts 16, verse number 31. Um, Hechos 16, 31. They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. As I close, I want to I want to help you understand what truthfully this is really about. Um, les quiero ayudar a entender lo que de veras esto, esto es. Jesus is bringing just clear direction. Jesús, That's it. Jesús nos está trayendo dirección. But he's asking us to do things because we want to do them. Pero quiere que hagamos cosas porque nosotros queremos hacerlo. Not that we have to. No porque tenemos que. And I think many of us sometimes we do things out of obligation. A veces, uh, cosas por oh, I have to go over. It's, it's, it's my, my cousin's wedding. You don't want to go. No ir. Do we have to buy him a birthday present? Le que un <laughs> oh, I'm too tired to go. Oh, estoy tan para ir. We complain about things that we're required to do. We, we don't like to be obligated to be involved in something. No nos gusta ser a hacer algo. God is not looking for your obligation. Dios no está tu He's looking for your faithfulness. Está tu fe. To Him. A él. Not to me. No, no a él. Not to the four walls of this church. No, aquí de la not even to the whole buildings that we have. But it's to Him. Pero es a él. To serve Him. Para to worship Him. Para, para lavarte. Lavar. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it, it's a practice that He shows. Es una que nos it's a pattern that we need for our life. Es algo que que en vidas. It's something that we must embrace and allow to be part of everything we do. Hebrews 10.25 gives us that example. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. We do this to come together as one body and worship the Lord for who He is. I want you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Oh, Father, I come before you. See, I, I believe in my heart. I really do believe in my heart. Sometimes we can get caught up in things that we should do, things that, that we're asked to do, and we treat them as part of our commitment to you. That's not, that's not, what, that's not what that's about. You confronted that issue here. You called it out and said, 
It's not about regulations. Look what the law of what David did and his, his, all his army. No, Lord, you, you, you've brought a, a clear definition of why we come together. It's a sacrifice, yes. Sometimes it's hard, yes. Sometimes there's difficulty in making it happen, yes. But we honor it because of who you are and what you've done in our lives. We do it because of the goodness that comes from you and how we see it through the week of our life. Father, it is, it is, a, it is a, an actionable thing of saying thank you for all that you've given us in our life, from our salvation, from our homes, our families, our health. Father, for even the simple things of the food that we put on our table. Lord, it's coming together and saying thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for watching over my household. Thank you, Lord, that you have provided gas for my car. And Father, that you've provided clothes on my back. And Father, that you have provided healing to my body. We just come to give thanks, to worship you for who you are, to receive direction for you for the next week as we move ahead. How it's gotten twisted and confused, I don't know. But you have pointed us once again in the right direction. You are the Sabbath. You are the truth. You are greater than all those things. For you're the most important thing in my life. You're the one that I serve. And Lord, I pray that that's what, that's what you're teaching us this morning. That's what you're moving our hearts to do right now. I pray that that's what happens as we leave this place, Lord. We aren't simply caught up in a bunch of things. We're caught up in a relationship. Oof entangled, Lord, in a relationship with you. And sometimes it gets difficult and hard and we, we have to surrender. But that relationship becomes deeper and more meaningful and it has a way of holding on to us even when we want to break away. That you love us that much, that you stay close to us. You hunt us down. I can never outrun the love of God. I thank you for that, Lord. I'm asking, Lord, that as we leave, God, that you once again rekindle, Father, some of these things that are confusing in our life and remind us that it's all about you. It's all about you. Nothing is more important. I ask you, O oh Lord, that as we leave this place, that as this seed is planted in the heart, that we remember, Lord, we come here for you. We serve you. We love you. We look at things differently within our lives. We set priorities that honor you in our life. That we do things not because we're supposed to. We do things because we love you. We love you for what you've done. I ask you, Lord, blessing over your children this morning. Blessing over their lives, blessing over their homes, blessing over their families as their households push closer and draw closer to you. I thank you, Father. Lift your hands with me as we get ready for our benediction prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and may he give you peace throughout this week. Amen and amen. Can you give the Lord a praise this morning? Amen. Thank him for that. If you're looking for prayer this morning, the altar is open. We're going to be dismissing, but I would love to pray with you. And the same goes online. If you have a prayer request, just say, I, I need prayer this morning. And we'll make sure we pray over, over your request. But thank you for joining us and God bless you this morning. Amen. 
Thank you for watching our service today. Our prayer is that it spoke to you and challenged you to follow the patterns of Jesus. Yeah, and I, I pray that you, you, you've you adopted, you've, you've grabbed a spiritual discipline for your life, that God would continue to speak to you. Remember that these messages are here for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to draw you closer to the Lord. And I pray that that, that, that happens here in, in this service. So thank you so much for joining us and God bless you. Bless you.